In this video, I'm going to share with you all the details of an option trade that went against us in a big way. I'm then going to show you what we did to save this losing option position. This will help you so you can use these same techniques to recover losses in your option trading account. Being a successful option trader isn't just about winning trades. In order to be a long-term successful option trader, you must know how to deal with losing option trades. The position I'm going to share with you is one that we've been in over the past 10 months. It's in Pinnacle West, ticker symbol PNW. Briefly, Pinnacle West is a utility company. When you think of utility companies, you tend to think of stable, consistently profitable, and somewhat even boring companies. You don't think of a company that might experience a lot of volatility. And indeed, as you can see on the daily chart of Pinnacle, at the left side, or base of the white arrow, on March 17th, Pinnacle was behaving quite nicely. Over the next several months, Pinnacle West found support multiple times at the green 50 moving average. However, in mid-June, it experienced a sharp decline from $89 down to $82. As a result, on June 18th, we were assigned 300 shares of Pinnacle West. At that point, I thought, ah, that's no big deal. I'll just turn it into a cover call and begin collecting dividends. It's a nice dividend paying stock, as you can see here. And I'll also begin pocketing some cash by selling some covered call options in it. Now I fast forward the chart to November 10th. As you can see, about a month after we were assigned the shares of Pinnacle West, it began to crash. And it kept crashing. And it kept crashing to the point Point, where on November 9th and 10th, it was trading at $63 per share. That means that our stable, boring, solid utility company had crashed from a previous high of $88 per share down to $63 per share, which amounted to a 28% decline in just three months. That's definitely not what I expected to happen when we entered this position. And actually, there was a good reason for this crash. As you can see here on October 8th, Pinnacle West received some bad news regarding its case that was before the Arizona Corporation Commission about the rates that they were allowed to charge their customers. The Arizona Commission voted to reduce Pinnacle West's potential profits, thus decreasing their return on equity from 10% to 8.7%. This ruling was worse than what management was expecting. Okay, so that's why this boring, stable stock crashed. But the big question is, what do we do to fix this position? Now, now let me prepare you, this wasn't some simple fix. We got whipsawed several times this position. Here you see every trade we've done in Pinnacle West since March 17th of last year. As you can see, up until June 18th, we we're doing good in this position. And we collected just over $1,690. But then on June 18th, we were assigned 300 shares of Pinnacle West. We were assigned those shares at $85 per share. At this point, we were still in good shape. We just turned it into a covered call. And for the next four months, we collected pretty decent income. We were even able to pocket the $0.83 cent per share dividend. However, our first big problem came when it was time to roll our third Friday of October $85 call option out. You see, the November $85 call option just wasn't paying any premium at all. So what were we going to do? Well, I still felt comfortable with the company. I thought the market was overreacting to its bad news. I mean, the company should have been able to continue functioning profitably and still have plenty of cash left over to pay its dividend, all while continuing to grow. Worst case scenario, if things got really bad, it could cut its dividend to free up some of its cash. Because of that, I decided to stick with the position. I remember telling my patrons this would most likely be a really good learning experience. I felt pretty confident at this point that if Pinnacle West stabilized, we could use options to lower our cost basis to the point where this would be a profitable position. My plan was to sell covered calls at a strike price lower than where we had bought the stock at or lower than $85 per share. Then as Pinnacle West stabilized and began to increase in price, I would just roll my covered call strike price back up to exit position as another winner. So on October 8th, I sold the third Friday of November $65 call option. As you can see here, when I sold that $65 call option, it was actually in the money because Pinnacle West was trading around $66 per share. Now you might be thinking, Randy, why did you sell an in the money call option, especially on a stock that you've been signed that stock at $85 per share? That's $20 lower than what you paid for it. Here you see on the left chart, the daily chart, and on the right, the weekly charts of Pinnacle West. Notice on the left chart where the white arrows are, that Pinnacle West was definitely in a solid downtrend on the daily chart. The last two days have been big down days on very high volume. Over in the weekly chart, we see that the wave that it was in, it had just made a new lower low. So technically, Pinnacle West was in a downtrend on the weekly chart as well. Also down the volume section, so that volume was increasing as the price was dropping. Because of that, I expected Pinnacle West to continue to decline in price. I sold this in the money covered call option to give us a little more protection in case Pinnacle West continued to drop. And we actually paid pretty good for this call option. As you see here, we received $2.80 per share or $840 for this covered call option trade. The problem is what happened right at a month later. 
As you see here on November 12th, Pinnacle West was called away from us at $65 per share. If I remember correctly, this was done to capture the 85 cent per share dividend because it was about to go ex-dividend. Now, the stock really wasn't that far in the money, so this assignment, it surprised me. The problem is that now, we are out of a stock at a price that was lower than the $85 per share that we purchased it at. As you can see here, at that point, we are showing a loss of $2,278 in this position. I had questions in my Patreon group about what I was going to do about it. The day it was called away from us was on a Friday. So instead of making a snap decision, I decided to take the weekend to really analyze the situation so I could make a calm, well thought out, clear headed, solid decision that put the odds of winning this overall position back in our favor. Now that is an important point to keep in mind when it comes to saving a losing option position. I could sense that I had been slightly caught off guard by the assignment of that option. And I had a knee jerk reaction to go right back into this position by selling a new cash secured put option. But I could feel that I was slightly being influenced by the surprise of the stock being caught away from me. If you sense that in any way that emotion might be influencing a trading decision, in my opinion, it's vital to take a step back, take a breather, and even let the trade sit overnight so you can make a decision based on logic, technical analysis, and not be swayed by emotion. This is important every trade that you do, especially when a trade has gone against you and you're trying to fix a losing position. By the way, that was really useful what I just shared with you. And I'd love it if you just give this video a like, just bump the like button. And while you're there, if becoming a more consistently profitable option trader is important to you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. Over the weekend, I reviewed the daily and weekly chart, and here's what I saw. I noticed that Pinnacle West had recently had several really strong updates. I also noticed that Pinnacle West was still a decent distance away from this green 50 moving average. Over in the weekly chart, I noticed that over the past three weeks, it looked like Pinnacle West was trying to find support around 65. Again, I noticed that Pinnacle West was pretty far away from both of its moving averages. Because of this, as well as my belief that the company was still a solid company, I decided to sell a new cash secured put option in Pinnacle West. So as you can see here, on Monday, November 15th, we sold the third Friday of December $65 cash secured put options. For that, we were paid $1.35 per share. After this trade, as you can see here, when you back out the 10 cents per share that it costs to buy that third Friday of December option back, we're still at a loss, but it was down to $1,902 and things were starting to look better. Right at a month later, we had to make another big decision with this position. Let me show you what I saw, what my decision was, and the reasoning behind that decision. I have now fast forward the daily and weekly charts to December 14th, the day that we rolled the third Friday of December 65 put option out to January. First, let me tell you what I did. As you can see here, I decided to roll the $65 strike price up to 70. That meant that the new cash secured put option we sold was actually in the money by $2.50 per share. I generally don't advocate selling in the money put options, but let me tell you the reasons why I decided to do that with this position. First, we were trying to save a losing option trade. However, that by no means was the most important reason. The most important reason is that when I looked at the daily chart, I noticed that it recently made a higher low. I also noticed down the volume section that as the stock was going up, the volume was increasing. Then I looked over on the weekly chart. There I noticed that Pinnacle West had found really strong support right around $65 per share over the past 11 weeks. I also noticed in the volume section on the weekly chart that over the past couple months, there had been really strong buying pressure in Pinnacle West. It looked to me that if Pinnacle West could break through this 50 moving average on the daily chart, it would most likely advance to 70. By rolling the third Friday of December $65 put option up and out to January 70 put option, we were able to pocket a net of $3 per share in our pocket. Fast forward to January 18th, and with Pinnacle West trading right at our short strike price, it was decision time again. I thought about rolling this $70 put option up to 75 because it would have actually pushed us into profit on this overall position. However, in looking at the daily chart, I saw that in order for Pinnacle West to reach our strike price, we'll have to push through the red to a moving average. I believe this was possible because Pinnacle West had been riding the green 50 moving average as nice support over the previous month. However, in looking at the weekly chart, I also saw that the green 50 moving average was right at that $75 strike price. Because of that, I decided to play a little bit safer, although it wouldn't pay us as much, but I decided to roll the January 70 put option out to the third Friday of February. For that, we were able to pocket a net of $1.35 per share. So that's where we now sit. As of right now, we're down $568.45 in this overall position. That equates to $1.89 per share. In all, not bad for a stock that's really taking us on a wild ride and is still down $15 or almost 18% from where it was trading at when we first started this position. With one or two more good trades, we'll be back in the profit on this Pinnacle West position. If you'd like to receive alerts when we do trades similar to the ones I showed in this video, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down in the link in the description below. 
If you'd like to see some of the tips and tricks that I use when selling covered call options, check out the video at the link above in the description below entitled Selling Covered Call Tips. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.